We are going to talk a lot about vitamin D. Welcome back to another Metabolic Monday. We are live. I'm going to give you guys just a few minutes to hop on, but we're going to take a deep dive into all things vitamin D. I was asked to do a webinar for an employer group, and I was really inspired by the research that I came across with regards to vitamin D, autoimmune disease, gastrointestinal issues, periodontal disease, and improving immune system health in the context of respiratory viruses, as well as metabolic health and cardiovascular health. And we're gonna dive into that webinar very, very soon. But first, I just wanna thank you all for being here. If at any point you're enjoying the content, please hit that like button. You can leave me any nutrition-related uh, comment or question in the comment section uh, on the chat here. We're gonna have a lot of fun tonight. I wanna keep it to about, mm, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Uh, and we're going to talk all about vitamin D. And, you know, there's a, a lot of talk about, you know, putting vaccines in the water or putting fluoride in the water supply and so forth. Uh, my hypothesis here is if we really care about individuals' health and population-based health, we should probably consider, not that it's realistic to even consider this, but we should probably consider vitamin D as a candidate for something that should be put in the water supply. I'm going to make that argument because there is astounding evidence finding that vitamin D is very protective when it comes to immune system health, preventing and optimizing cardiovascular disease, metabolic health, even preventing some cancers. Now, it's important to acknowledge for our litigious friends in the audience that we're not talking about diagnosing, treating, curing, or preventing disease. We're talking about optimizing health with nutrients like vitamin D. And we'll also talk about why vitamin D is so rampant in terms of the deficiency. So let's dive into it. Again, if you're enjoying the content, hit that like button, share this video with a friend. Let's talk about vitamin D. So why do we care about vitamin D? Well, over the past three years, and I will assure you during the year 2023, these numbers are going to be quite similar. The top two leading causes of death were, wait for it, not COVID-19, it was heart disease and cancer claimed more than 1.2 million lives during the year 2020, 2021, and 2022. Uh, so we're looking at like five, four point like six million people. It's a lot of people. And it turns out that vitamin D impacts these very biologic systems that are prob uh, from a probability standpoint, the reason why most people uh, live shorter lives than they have anticipated. Heart disease, cancer, all of that. I'm going to share with you the research on vitamin D and cancer momentarily. This is an excellent paper you may want to take a screenshot of. By the way, in the description below, uh, there's a link to a vitamin D test because I think it's important to test your vitamin D levels. You can save with the code podcast. I will give you the show notes this full PDF, if you're interested, uh, place an order through Myoscience, send an email, I'll get you that as a bonus. So um, that is what's coming for you. But I just want to give you this free information in about 15 minutes. Now, why is vitamin D is very important? I'm going to make the case, but I want to share with you some facts that a lot of people don't realize why vitamin D insufficiency is so rampant. Well, we have age. As you get older, your, your skin or the cutaneous ability to synthesize vitamin D when you are exposed to full body sun exposure, by the way, if you live north of Atlanta, Georgia, between the months of March and April, April, March and October, it's very unlikely that you're going to get sufficient cutaneous levels of vitamin D by way of UVB synthesis onto the skin. So that's important. That's why you might need to supplement during the winter months or the spring. Uh, also, uh, if you avoid the sun, like for example, a lot of people, they go hiking, they play golf, they go for a walk, they go to the beach. What do they do? They put on sunscreen and they cover their skin. So avoiding the sun is a major reason why people are insufficient in vitamin D. Uh, so clothing, air pollution. If you live in a metropolitan area where there's a lot of freeways, I'm talking downtown LA, downtown Chicago, uh, Manhattan, Miami, San Francisco, Seattle. If you li live around a bunch of buildings, you might be seeing the sun periodically, but you're not getting sufficient cutaneous vitamin D synthesis, which as you're going to soon learn has a lot of problems and consequences from a long-term health perspective. Uh, and why is that? Well, the buildings are blocking the sun's ability to cutaneously synthesize vitamin D. Obesity. This is highly important because in just a few years, more than 50% of the U.S. population will be categorized as obese in terms of the adults. And we're already north of 45% in most states now, uh, especially in the Southwest and the Midwest. So obesity. Remember, vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin. It can be sequestered in your fat cells. So if you're overweight or obese or have a little bit excess body fat, that could be a reason why you have insufficient vitamin D levels. Uh, so that's uh, one important thing to consider. Okay. 
Now, when you and I were in biology, right, we were taught 20 years ago, 25 years ago, that vitamin D insufficiency is linked with rickets. We now know that insufficiency of vitamin D is linked with cardiometabolic issues, immune issues, immune insufficiency, increased susceptibility to infectious diseases, and possibly cancer. So these are, again, if you look at the CDC statistics that we just looked at here, uh, these are the reason why these three causes of death comprise a super majority of all causes of death. Why aren't we hearing about vitamin D from our public, public health officials? Uh, and, and why is this? Because vitamin D receptors are numerous. They are found on various immune cells in the body. They are found in the brain. They are found in the musculoskeletal system, in the muscle tissue, the liver, immune cells. This is why people with irritable bowel syndrome, autoimmunity, get benefit when they optimize their vitamin D levels, which I'm going to share with you momentarily. These cells are everywhere. Now, I know COVID, the, the major fear of being hospitalized from COVID is long since, uh, we're not so worried about that with Omicron. Now, people can still get sick. I believe I just got COVID for the second time this last week, and I was feeling tired, uh, still did my regular activities, but you know, feel a little bit more tired. And if you want to prevent getting really sick uh, and being out of work and, and occupational uh, and recreational activities, well, you might want to optimize your vitamin D levels. This study was really fascinating, finding a strong association. This was one of the first studies of its kind. We're just going to spend a few minutes on these COVID studies, then we'll dive into the metabolic stuff, which I know you want to learn more about. Uh, various uh, studies have found that insufficient vitamin D levels are strongly correlated with a much greater severity of COVID-19, particularly in the early part of the uh, uh, outbreak. And what they found is that the prevalence of vitamin D insufficiency was 100% in critically ill individuals. Now, it's not yet known, right? Because again, it could be that during acute infectious illnesses that there is increased turnover demand and, and maybe vitamin D levels decline as a consequence of the infection. But I'm going to share with you multiple studies very soon finding that pre-infection vitamin D insufficiency is highly correlated with severe COVID. Now, you might be saying, Mike, I've already had COVID. I'm not worried about it. But we have seasonal flus. We have RSV. We have the common cold, right? We have things that we should be caring about. And it appears that keeping a high baseline level of vitamin D might help you in the context of seasonal colds and flus. So uh, we're going to talk about this slide several times here. Optimal vitamin D levels, it depends on where you live because it can be categorized in nanomoles per liter or nanograms per milliliter. We're aiming around 60 nanograms per ml, which is what LabCorp, uh, how they quantify or enumerate vitamin D, or above 125 milligrams, or I'm sorry, nanomoles per liter. Okay, so here's the different thresholds that you want to uh, keep in mind. Now, when you go and get your annual physical, your doctor's going to Make sure that you don't have overt deficiency, but as you now know, there's a difference between optimal health and being overtly insufficient. We want to err on the side of optimal health. This was that study I was mentioning. Several studies find that pre-infection low vitamin D levels are linked with more severe outcomes when it comes to COVID-19. As you can see from these charts, they speak volumes. Uh, as you look here, the blood levels of vitamin D in individuals who had mild COVID were on average about 40 nanograms per ml. In contrast, most critically ill patients, their blood levels fell around 10 to 12 nanograms uh, per ml. And so you saw that this actually was independent of age. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a risk factor for vitamin D insufficiency is advanced age, meaning individuals who are over the age of 65 might be more susceptible to having low vitamin D levels because as you get older, all sorts of functions become compromised and it is prop probable, you know, as you get older, you're worried about wrinkles and stuff because you can see them more. And so most people, as they get older, they're covering up even more. The concern for cancer increases as you get older. And so a lot of folks uh, in their 50s and 60s want to cover up, want to lather up with sunscreen. And so uh, that being said, there's an independent age uh, age independent association uh, with pre-infection vitamin D levels and severity of COVID-19. And that the strength of that curve is even stronger as you get older. So your grandparents, your parents should be optimizing vitamin D. I mean, how many people do you know in their 50s and 60s, do they even care about vitamin D status? Uh, here's another interesting study finding 
a percentage of comorbidities that is independently associated with vitamin D status. And these were individuals who were hospitalized for COVID or went to the hospital. So they were already, they had a lot of comorbid conditions. As you can see here, uh, in the vitamin D insufficient group, 80% of these had one or more, more comorbid conditions. In contrast, in individuals who had a vitamin D level between 20 and 30 nanograms per ml, the prevalence of comorbid conditions was just 73%. And as blood levels got up north of 30 nanograms per ml, the prevalence of comorbid conditions was just 18%. <laughs> so think about this, my friends. This really helps us better understand how this fat-soluble vitamin hormone-like compound is impacting so many aspects of the body. Now, in terms of death, 98.9% .9 of individuals in this particular Indonesian subset um, had insufficient vitamin D levels. Uh, in contrast, uh, it, there was only 4% of the deaths in the people who had vitamin D levels greater than 30 nanograms per ml. Here was a, a, a prospective, I'm sorry, it was a retrospective study where they uh, gave administered vitamin D to people who were already in the hospital for COVID, finding a significant reduction in symptoms. This was a study in Japan, one of the only studies of its kind. Uh, I don't know why we didn't do more of this here in the US, but that's besides the point. Very fascinating information. Now, let's go on to other conditions, right? I don't want to talk about COVID all the time because, you know, COVID, the risk of severe death and, and disease is not so uh, eminent right now. However, uh, we know that the health of the microbiome starts right here in the mouth. And I came across this paper right here titled Vitamin D in Periodontal Health, a Systematic Review, finding an incredible dossier of literature suggesting that this fat-soluble hormone that you ingest affects the bone structure and the oral microbiome, which is really important. You've all heard about leaky gut. And how many of you have heard about leaky gums? If you have porous membranes in the gastrointestinal tract, you're going to have leaky gums. And that's problematic if you have uh, a high, high prevalence of, of you know, different bacteria, spirochetes in the mouth, lactic acid producing bacteria. Those bacteria can get in through the leaky gums into the brain and cause uh, inflammation in the brain, which is problematic. So for oral health, really important. We all want to have good breath. We want to have nice, shiny, healthy teeth as we get older, especially. And it turns out that vitamin D insufficiency can enable bacterial infections in your gums, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, problematic. Um, uh, Matt Caroline and so forth, who does a lot of research when it comes to longevity, has been studying periodontal disease as a proxy of aging. So poor dental health and, and uh, periodontal disease might exacerbate or be a symptom of accelerated biologic aging. So we want to optimize the health of our, of our oral microbiome as well. Uh, Mark Brahena has been on the podcast. We've talked a lot about tools to do that. Okay, so let's just quickly talk about cancer. Uh, obviously, cancer is a devastating diagnosis. We don't wish cancer on our worst enemies. Uh, cancer is very problematic. It's the second leading cause of mortality here in the US. It turns out that uh, vitamin D plays a critically important role in both survival and prevalence of colorectal cancer, as well as breast cancer, and possibly even prostate cancer. So here's, uh, this was Nature Reviews uh, Cancer. This was a, a study looking at the effect of vitamin D supplementation on survival of colon cancer, finding uh, a, a dose-dependent effect of vitamin D and outcomes when it comes to colon cancer, which is quite interesting. Now, what about metabolic health? You know, this is really important. We just did a great podcast with Dr. Phil Ovedia, the cardiovascular surgeon, about how metabolic health and poor metabolic health are really the harbingers of cardiovascular disease and heart attacks and so forth. And so we know that about 96% of American adults have some degree of poor metabolic health. So the super majority of us can benefit from optimizing metabolic health. Well, it turns out that vitamin D impacts blood sugar regulation. And uh, part of that could be of where the receptors are. Part of that could be benefiting the immune system. It's not really totally sussed out, but there's a, uh, you know, if you want to optimize metabolic health, vitamin D may help there as well. Uh, when it comes to the cardiovascular system, it turns out that vitamin D might be helpful uh, for affecting blood pressure in particular. And so uh, a lot of folks have hypertension or high blood pressure. Uh, that, of course, is problematic for long-term cardiovascular-related uh, functions and so forth. Uh, and so that's something that we want to be mindful of and uh, possibly, I'm just looking at the chat right here, uh, affect 
uh, vitamin D might affect blood pressure as well as magnesium and other factors. Uh, and there's a lot of different mechanisms as to why vitamin D may decrease blood pressure and optimize cardiovascular health. So that's important to understand. Um, let's talk about the gut. I came across this piece of literature several years ago. Um, my friend Stasha Gomenek shared this with me. We did a full podcast on all, all things vitamin D and sleep and things like that. Um, and as a side note, uh, she's found in her practice that dosing vitamin D uh, before bed may affect sleep in a favorable manner. Uh, this study found, and there's a lot of evidence to suggest that vitamin D helps optimize the gut microbiome and the gut integrity and the gut lining, which I think is quite interesting. So um, really uh, interesting stuff on the gut. So, it, And there is independent research finding vitamin D insufficiency is linked with irritable bowel syndrome, Crohn's colitis, and gastrointestinal issues, as well as systemic autoimmune issues like rheumatoid arthritis and multiple sclerosis. These are the categories of uh, clinical ailments that people benefit most from when it comes to vitamin D. It's multiple sclerosis, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, that said, there is research on depression and mental health uh, because, of course, we know the gut is connected to the brain. And so if we have gut imbalances, our tummy's upset, we have leaky gut, we have dysbiosis, we have chronic inflammation, that's going to affect the brain. So it makes sense then that if we optimize vitamin D and improve gut health, that we would affect the brain in a favorable manner. And so there was uh, some research that I don't have in this particular presentation. I can actually, I'll add it for the bonus for you guys. I'll tell you about the bonus in a minute. Uh, and, and you can... Uh, learn more about that, but really good evidence to suggest that vitamin D optimization helps mood and mental health. So that's really important. Okay. So again, going back to the blood levels, where do you want to get your blood levels of vitamin D? Well, again, as I mentioned, there's two different ways to enumerate vitamin D uh, status in the body, and they can be listed as nanomoles per liter or nanograms per milliliter. So with most people getting vitamin D testing through LabCorp, uh, it's reported as nanograms per ml. So we want to aim between 40 and 65 nanograms per ml. I'm seeing a few comments here in the chat that people have super high vitamin D levels. Uh, one individual said that their uh, vitamin D levels was 175 nanograms per ml. Uh, you know, you do want to watch for uh, hypercalcemia, uh, What's known in the literature is hypervitaminosis D, too much vitamin D. Remember, vitamin D is different from, say, folate or B12 or zinc. Those are all water-soluble. Vitamin D is fat-soluble, which is why obese individuals tend to trend towards vitamin D insufficiency, having low levels of vitamin D because it can be sequestered in fat tissue or adipocytes. Um, that being said, you can overdo vitamin D. I, 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 we'll talk about dosages here momentarily, and I'll open up the chat um, to most of you. But we want to aim, again, around uh, 125 nanomoles per liter or around 60 nano, um, nanograms per ml. So those are the two different ways that we look at this. Um, just a small plug. Again, we can't diagnose, cure, prevent, or treat diseases on these episodes. I just shared with you science on vitamin D insufficiency. Uh, you can test by going to your doctor, which I do recommend because you want to look for calcium levels and changes therein. Um, but we also offer this through Myoscience. This is a at-home blood spot test. So during the winter months, as we get closer now, spring is on the, on the rise. You want to see how much sunlight should you be getting or optimizing or during the winter, did you really you know, get sufficient vitamin D levels. This is a test you can save with the code podcast at myoscience.com. Um, and, and one thing, th this is what the report looks like. Um, and so this is just, you know, a, a sample patient that recently came in. Uh, we have we have people doing this uh, report all the time and so forth. Um, you, you do a little blood spot. You don't have to get venipuncture. You just do this at home, send the kit back and the lab will check it out. And so most people that are uh, supplementing with vitamin D and K2 in this, uh, they find that their blood levels are around 60 to 70 nanograms per ml, which I think is, is good considering uh, the winter cold and flu and with COVID variants circulating. Um, in terms of dosaging, you know, there's tons of vitamin D options you can get out there, guys. And you can go to Amazon, Walmart, whatever. Um, I can't speak to the quality, but if you do want a third-party tested high-quality vitamin D with a high-quality uh, vitamin K2, uh, this is available for you too over at Myoscience. But you can, again, you can just do whatever you want with vitamin D. This is just one of many options that you have. And the dosage range that I suggest starting at 
is uh, the 5,000 micrograms uh, per day. So I'll put links in the description. We can talk more about that stuff later. But again, just wanted to give you a primer on just the effect that vitamin D has uh, in terms of uh, benefiting uh, all sorts of systemic tissues in the body. And I'm just going to leave uh, this live here and pop this uh, layer up so that we can uh, talk about some of this stuff and really dive into this uh, shortly. So uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to change this layer. I'm going to move this guy right here. So we're kind of looking at that. And voila, we are back on the full screen mode. Um and I want to get to your live questions. Again, if you enjoy uh, these types of presentations, just let me know in the, the comment section below. Let me know by hitting that like button so that I know to do more of these types of videos uh, down the road. Um, you know, I love sharing science and sh science-based messages. You know, if you found this information helpful in just a 15-minute soundbite type session, uh, of course, we can do more of this stuff uh, down, the, down the line. But I, I was just blown away, particularly at the mental health literature, uh, the literature on severe COVID, the literature on irritable bowel syndrome and some of the changes within the bowel uh, in blood sugar health. I mean, this is just astounding that uh, more people don't know about uh, the importance of vitamin D when it comes to all these, you know, various uh, health issues, uh, colon cancer, uh, you know, uh, periodontal disease, gut health. I mean, it's just really uh, astounding, especially these different graphs and uh, with regards to uh, COVID outcomes. So um, let's just leave it on this particular slide. Again, I don't think the health of the mouth really gets enough attention, but we know that this is really important where uh, disease uh, manifest. You know, if you have leaky gut, leaky gums, you're going to have periodontal disease and that is linked. The plaque in the mouth can be found in the brain and it's linked with dementia and Alzheimer's. So um, again, very grateful that you're here. Let's dive into some live questions here. There's quite a few of you on, which is fantastic. Thanks for being here on Metabolic Monday. Um, Allison Lee says, emulsified D3K2 is best for bioavailability. Yeah, so vitamin D is very bioavailable. Uh, you don't need to emulsify uh, vitamin K. Uh, Allison, as long as you have vitamin D with some food, you're going to be just fine. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good comment though. Um, the, the, the thing that you need to consider is just eat vitamin D with your meals. That's really important. Okay. How should I take a vitamin D level, uh, more bioavailable? Oh, this was a comment here from, uh, Dreis DT. Yeah, so just take your vitamin D with a fatty meal. That's it. Take your vitamin D supplement. Make sure it's a good company, a reputable company, and you're going to be just fine. Um, and I love this comment from Jim. Jim says, everyone needs for vitamin D3 are different. Test, test, test. Yes, Jim, I agree. And that's why we're talking about testing. And that's why I'll just leave this test here. Uh, it's in the description below if you want. And again, you guys can go to your doctor, which I do recommend. But uh, for follow-up testing, you can track with this blood spot test. Um those with ApoE44 genotype need the most vitamin D3 and K2. Yeah, Jim, I agree, 100%. Uh, Swamp Hawk says, I love raw milk. Yeah, I love raw milk too. Just got some uh, yesterday. All right. Okay, Girl Interrupted says, I take it with salmon oil. I think that's great. A lot of people are not eating enough fish. We know we're going to get vitamin D from fish, which is fantastic. Okay, Uh Carl Lover says, LabCorp offers two different tests, 125-dihydroxyvitamin D as well as 25-hydroxyvitamin D. Yeah, so the 125-dihydroxy is the metabolite of, of vitamin D. And so this may increase in people who are systemically inflamed. Uh, and so you could look at that, and it would be curious uh, if you have an acute infection, for example, to see if your body is taking the sequestered or stored vitamin D and ripping that through to 125-dihydroxyvitamin D. So that's interesting. Uh, great, great point there. But most of the studies just look at 25-hydroxyvitamin D. Um, so yeah, good question here. Okay. Dr. G. Mendoza says, never take vitamin D alone without vitamin A or vitamin F, omega-3 for calcium transport. Yeah, so vitamin K is what you want to take your D with. I agree with you 100%. So that's something to absolutely consider. So that's a, a really good point uh, there. So thank you for that. Um, okay. Monica says, now I wonder if that decrease in vitamin D is what led to her cancer diagnosis. She was so, so healthy three weeks ago. I think I'm missing a part of that earlier chat from Monica. It looks like someone that she knows, unfortunately, was diagnosed with cancer. 
Um, there's a lot of reasons why people get cancer, not just vitamin D insufficiency, but as I mentioned, there could be some evidence to suggest that vitamin D may help uh, decrease cancer risk and progression. Uh, but again, very important that we are not talking about diagnosing, treating, curing, or preventing diseases here, just talking about optimizing health. Uh, really important to acknowledge. BR says, I want to learn everything there is to know about blood labs, etc. What they mean, what affects them, how to change them. BR, in the description below is our is a link to the Blood Work Master class. Definitely check that out. I, I think that's one of the most comprehensive resources on the interwebs. I'm biased, of course, but definitely check it out. Do you really need the vitamin K with the vitamin D3? You know, this is a good question. Do you absolutely have to have it? No. But I think if you're really having high levels of vitamin D, that it is good measure because we know that vitamin D can help with calcium metabolism and we want calcium to be uh, metabolized into the hard tissues, not the soft tissues. And so here's an image for you. Uh, we know that calcified plaque can become problematic. So perhaps in people who have supraphysiologic levels of vitamin D, with unopposed calcium uh, signaling and, and insufficient vitamin K2, that perhaps it might uh, be an issue for, for cardiovascular disease risk. And so that's just, it's just good measure to take them both together. Uh, it's not really uh, absolutely mandatory. It doesn't add much cost. And most people aren't getting a lot of vitamin K in their diet and they have poor gut health, so their vitamin K levels suck anyway. So that's why I think it's a good thing to do. Um, does vitamin D need to be taken daily? No. So you can just do this actually once a week, you know, uh, and so you could do a higher dose, uh, a bolus dose of what you might do daily, uh, just one day a week. So some people do that. They'll just do like 50 microgram or sorry, 50 international units, uh, a week or, um, one milligram a week, something like that, which is about, uh, 50,000 IUs. So you can do that weekly. Good. Great question, guys. I really appreciate these questions. Okay. What about grass-fed beef liver tabs? Yeah, uh, beef liver is not going to be a great source of vitamin D, unfortunately. Um, you're going to get zinc, you're going to get B vitamins, riboflavin, thiamine, folate, B, you know, but not vitamin D. Uh, vitamin D is found in fatty fish. Uh, vitamin D is also found in mushrooms. So good question there though. Uh, triglycerides are lowered by avoiding sugar. Absolutely. Yeah. The best way to drop your triglycerides is cut out your carbs. Uh, so I, uh, agree wholeheartedly with that comment. Um, triglycerides are a major problem for cardiovascular disease and, and a major marker of poor metabolic health that I think goes under-recognized. So yeah, you definitely want to, uh, cut out the sugar, uh, and the processed carbs that's going to affect, uh, your, that's going to affect your, your, uh, uh, triglycerides. So again, just a quick uh, reminder, uh, really appreciate you all being here live. If you want to get access to these slides, uh, what we've, we've worked out with Myoscience is you can get this uh, content as a bonus um, by just sending in your receipt for this vitamin D test. And uh, we'll get you that as a bonus. Um, that's this at-home test through Omega Quant. This is, again, just to test your levels periodically if you don't want to go back and get full-blown labs. It's a little bit more convenient and around the same cost. You just don't have to get an 18-gauge needle in your arm. You can just do a blood spot, and then you'll get the results by sending the kit back to the lab. You can save with the code podcast at checkout over at myoscience.com on that. Um, so yeah, lots of great questions. I really appreciate you all being here. Um, let me know in the comments if this was helpful. I, I download actually all of your chats and then we, I review them later. So I'm very grateful that, um, you, you all had some great questions here. We're going to, uh, review those a little bit later, but, um, have an awesome rest of your day. Uh, again, grateful that you tuned in. Was this helpful? Let me know by hitting that like, like button and leaving a comment that goes a long way. And we'll catch you all next Monday. We have a really good, interesting session uh, about all things metabolic health on Monday. So have an awesome rest of your day, an awesome week, and we'll catch you all later.